What's going on guys? So, I've been getting three questions asked to me on a daily basis. The first question is how I got into the fishing industry. The second question is why I started YouTube. And the third question is what kind of gear do you use? And so today I'm gonna go over all that. I'm gonna answer all your questions. So you guys stick around. Right, guys so as most of you guys know uh, I own angler up and from that business I do fishing charters uh, seminars I sell my own product um, and now I do a YouTube channel so I have a lot of things going on there with the company but what I want to I want you to forget about that for a minute and what I want, want to talk to you about is how it all started where it all stems from and the story behind it so that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today and I'm gonna start with how I got into fishing then I'm gonna go into why I started YouTube and then I'm gonna do a review of my gear so um, <clears throat> let's talk about how I got into the fishing industry. And it started when I was very young. So check this out right here. Uh, apparently I was really young. So this is my dad, he drug me to a little pond near our house. Uh, when I was like two years old, apparently uh, I had a mullet back then. I just, I just realized that, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm definitely rocking the mullet in that picture. But uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna go through a few more photos from my childhood and just show you some of the highlights uh, and stuff like that. So here's me with the largest king mackerel I've ever caught. Uh, this king mackerel weighed 55 pounds. Apparently I really liked pur purple shorts back then. I'm not really sure what's going on with that uh, or who let me walk out of the house like that. But yeah, that is my largest king mackerel. Uh, here's another photo of my very first cobia. Now, this cobia was caught when I was five years old outside of Pensacola Pass where I charter fish now on a daily basis. And I was totally rocking the jorts in that photo as well. So, I'm not sure who dressed me when I was a kid, but God, that's pretty sad. Okay, so let's move it on here. Uh, one thing that most people don't know about me is I did a ton of bass fishing. I actually bass fished more than I saltwater fished. Uh, here's a picture of me with my first bass over 10 pounds, and I'm also wearing a really cool dinosaur shirt in this picture, so I must have really liked dinosaurs. I'm not real sure. Um, but yeah, that's my first bass over 10 pounds. I still have them mounted on the wall today. And so bass fishing was a big part of my life growing up. Now I'm gonna show you a picture, and this is the, the sole reason that I'm involved in the fishing industry today. I've been working in the fishing industry for 11 years now. And, uh, and the reason I'm in the fishing industry is because of my dad. Now, my dad was a big tournament fisherman in the 90s, king mackerel tournament fisherman. Here's him and his tournament team at one of the SKA sanctioned fishing tournament events. Uh, man, they were one of the top tournament teams on the, in the southeast in the 90s. Uh, and they would, uh, he would drag me along to all the tournaments with him and I would be their junior angler. Uh, here's a photo of me dragging a king to the scale when I was like eight or nine years old. Um, so yeah, I got to experience a lot of stuff like that at a very, very early age. And uh, that kind of propelled me to want to pursue fishing as a career. So guys, now I want to fast forward to me now, just coming out of college, uh, looking for a job, not knowing what I wanted to do. As you've seen, I fished a ton as a child. I fished a lot of tournaments too. Here's me and my tournament partner uh, finishing in the top four in an IFA event. Here's us, uh, my tournament partner and I, doing well in a redfish tournament at De in Destin, Florida. Um, I think this one here is another IFA event. So I've done a lot of tournament fishing too, and most of it's tournament red fishing in the past. I, I don't do any tournaments anymore. It's just not something I'm interested in, but, uh, but I have done a lot of tournament fishing in the past. So, um, but so I'm, so I'm just now getting out of college and, and you know that I've, I've done all this fishing as a child. And so now I'm wondering like, what do I do? Uh, and, and I have a, I had a, actually had a college degree, but uh, you know, 
none of the stuff that none of the normal jobs interested me i did not want the nine to five i didn't want to go see a boss every day so right out of college i got this job as uh as a sales rep in the fishing industry and i was actually the pin fishing tackle rep and the owner hook rep over the states of florida georgia alabama and mississippi so i was in charge of four states it was a big job i probably wasn't ready for it but i learned a lot lot from it i gained a lot of awesome contacts that i still use today uh, so I'm very grateful for that job and grateful for that opportunity. Um, and basically, it uh, it opened doors for me to be able to start my own company three years later. Let me give you a little bit about the job description. I would have to go from tackle store to tackle store selling all the new pen products or the new owner hook products. And we also had a bunch of other lines as well that were smaller, but those were our two biggest lines. And, and I would have to go and sell them to the tackle stores. I would also uh, have to go to the big box stores like Bass Pro Shops and Gander Mountain and places like that and and sell these products to those big bo box stores as well so uh, it was an awesome job and an awesome experience and I learned a lot um, and and you know the coolest part about the job was working the trade show so I would get to go all over the co country and work these trade shows like iCast and different stuff like that uh, here's a picture of me and Hank Parker at iCast together uh, he was working the booth next to me so as a 23 year old kid I was working right next to Hank Parker I thought that was a pretty neat experience but uh, yeah so I got to do a lot with that job and the knowledge that I've gained is, is now propelled me to where I've been able to start and run a successful company today in the fishing industry. And that's kind of where Angler Up Charters came from and, and Angler Up the company came from. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that now. From that, so when I'm, tw I'm 25, 26, uh, I decided to leave the job with Penn and go out on my own. And when I did that, uh, you know, I had a lot of a lot of ups and downs, but ultimately it was the best decision I've ever made. It took me about two years to really get established as a guide, but once I did and once my business took off, I mean, it was smooth sailing from then, from then on. Uh, I also started a seminar series with it, and I'd go around and speak to schools that, uh, who's, that have kids that are interested in getting involved in the fishing industry. Um, I also sell my own product and uh, now I do YouTube. So uh, that's kind of where YouTube stemmed from. For me per personally, YouTube is more of a, a hobby than it is a job. I love going out and filming and, and it's kind of a relaxation period for me where I can take the camera out, film my fishing, film what I'm doing, uh, film my cooking and my eating. That's kind of my hobby. And I also enjoy giving back to you guys and showing you guys some of the knowledge that I've learned over the years from being involved in fishing and the fishing industry. Industry. Um, so YouTube really isn't about a business for me if it I already have a business but if it turns into a business in the future then you know I'd be grateful for that um, but I w whether I gain another subscriber or or not I'm gonna continue to make videos and continue to have fun with YouTube because I enjoy filming I enjoy making the videos and, and entertaining you guys and I just want to thank you guys for uh, for the support, the comments, the likes, and everything thus far, because man, you guys keep me going and keep me inspired to uh, to continue to make videos. I hope that answers some questions for you about where I've come from. Uh, you know, I've I've held a bunch of different jobs in the fishing industry, so I know what it takes to become an inshore guide or to start your own company or to sell your own product. So if you ever have any questions about anything, feel free to email me. All my contact info usually in my bio you can reach me pretty easily uh, so so feel free to email me with any questions you may have so now I'm about to do a gear review so I get a questions every day what kind of gear I use and so today I'm gonna do my first gear review and uh, and kind of go over everything from the boat that I'm charter fishing in to my rod and reel line etc and, uh, and I'm just gonna go over everything with you right now. So let's start with the boat, guys. Now, the boat that I run out of is a 24-foot Blazer Bay uh, 
2400 model with a 250 Suzuki four stroke on the back. Uh, it's a uh, kind of a hybrid between a bay boat and a golf boat. It's the largest bay boat that Blazer Bay makes and uh, and I got it purposely because I wanted a big boat to charter fish out of that I could fit five people comfortably in but that I could also take in shallow water if I need to but I can also run it in rough water if I need to as well so it's a great charter boat for for inshore near shore charters which is what I'm doing here in Pensacola Florida uh, now this right here this next thing that I'm going to show you is the most important piece of equipment that I own. This is a Minn Kota iPilot and this trolling motor actually will anchor your boat on the spot so I don't have to ever anchor my boat and when I'm charter fishing with clients this comes in hand. I mean this is the best thing that I have on my boat uh, because I can just uh, pull over a spot throw the trolling motor down and it anchors the boat within 10 seconds. It's awesome, <laughs> I love my iPilot and I will never run charters without a Minn Kota iPilot. <clears throat> so um, now let's talk a little bit about the rod and reel uh, combos that I use. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I worked for Penn Fish and Tackle for uh, a number of years and so I still keep up with a lot of the pin guys. I got used to fishing pin pin reels when I was working for pin and uh, and so I've kind of connected with them over the years and I still use their products. Now I will use a number of different pin reels depending on the situation that uh, that I'm in. So here is the most common pin reel that I use. This is the pin battle uh, 4000 and this is just an all-around reel that I use on my charters for everything from redfish, trout, flounder, sheep's head, to even sometimes taking it offshore and catching bonita and king mackerel and red snapper and mahi with it. Now you can really catch anything with this combo um, and I like the 4000 with you know between 20 uh, I usually use 20 pound braided line on it and, and that, that's going to give you, you're going to be able to cast it a long ways but it's still going to have enough strength that if you do hook a big fish you can get it in. So this is probably my favorite reel and it's a great affordable price point reel you know, if, if you're not wanting to spend a lot of money on your tackle. And I put a link in my description to this reel so that you guys can go there and, uh, and see for yourself. Um, but but uh, man, and, and you can actually purchase it through this link in my description if you're wanting a pin battle as well as any of the other products on my page. So that, that's the basic reel. I also, here's another reel that I use quite a bit. And this is the Pen Conflict 5000. Now, I put 40 pound braid on this because I use it to catch a lot of times for red snapper fishing and different stuff like that. Man, I love the Pen Conflict. It's a great workhorse reel. It's another reel that's not too pricey and it's something that I use on a daily basis. Now, here is another reel that I love and this, in my opinion, is one of the best price point reels on the market. And this is the Pen Fierce. Now, now, um, now this reel right here uh, is cheaper than the battle and the conflict, but man, it holds up just as good. I use these on my charter year round and we catch everything from bull red, sheep's head, uh, trout, flounder, all kind of stuff with it. And I literally never have any issues with this pin fierce. So I love my pin fierce. So those are the three reels that I really enjoy using on my trips. And those are uh, probably the, uh, the three that I will stick with from here on out in the future. Um, because man, I just anytime you can find a cheaper reel that you did, that holds up great like these three reels do, man, that's that's what that's what I want to go with because my clients are very hard on my tackle. I don't want to go with something that they're going to break or throw overboard, and I'm going to feel upset about. <laughs> that's just not not what I want to do. So. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the rods that I use. Okay guys, um, I use 
three or four different rods, but I will use a Penn Squadron, uh, and I will pair that up with the Penn Battle 4000 or the Fierce 4000, and that's a great all-around, I'll use like a medium light to a medium, uh, great all-around inshore rod for anything from trout to bull redfish. Uh, I've caught it all on it. Um, another rod that I use a lot, and I'll pair this up with the 5000 Conflict, is this Star Jigging Rod. I will also use a pin jigging rod, but I love this star jigging rod, and uh, and it works great, man. For I catch amberjack and snapper and all kind of stuff on the star jigging rod. I love it. Another rod I use a lot is an ugly stick. They're cheap and they don't break. I mean, they hold up great. And like I said, when I'm running charters. My clients are always breaking rods and snapping rods, and I don't, you know, it's something, I have to use something that's fairly cheap so that I'm not replacing it every week and eating up all my profit and equipment. So, uh, this ugly stick is, is a fantastic combo for, uh, for, uh, for charter fishing, and it'd be great if you're just looking for something that holds up well that you're not gonna have to pay a lot of money for. I usually use a six foot six medium action ugly stick to pair with these Battle 4000s, something like that, and it works phenomenal. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about my camera gear. I get a lot of questions about my camera gear and what I use to film these videos. And so I'll start with the GoPro. I use a GoPro on just about every one of my charter, or every one of my, uh, I, I bring it on all of my charters with me, but I also use it in all these films. Uh, so, uh, at some point in the film, I will use a GoPro. And the best GoPro that I have found for vlogging is the Hero 4 Black. And the reason why, it has the best audio of any GoPro that I've seen out there as far as audio quality. Man, I love the Hero 4 Black. Uh, it's gone down in price a lot since last year, so you can pick them up for a little cheaper than you could last year. Uh, but man, that, that's something that uh, I would always recommend having if you're going to start a YouTube channel or you're wanting to do some filming. The second piece of equipment I use to film is a Canon Rebel T6i. Now this is a DSLR camera. Man, I love this Can Canon Rebel. It shoots quality footage um, and uh, the picture is just phenomenal. That's what I'm using right now to talk to you guys is the Canon Rebel camera. It's great for still shots or for um, like candid shots or whatever you want to do uh, like that. I mean, it's, it takes phenomenal video. I cannot say enough about the video quality for this T6i camera. And again, all this stuff is linked in my bio uh, if you want to check it out. I also am going to put a link to my tripod that I use in my bio and my microphones that I use in my bio because those are really important for audio. So all the stuff I use to film with is gonna be in my bio below. Guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, if you ever have any questions about any of the stuff that I'm using, any of the gear I'm using or anything like that, don't hesitate to ask because I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Uh, or, or you know any question you may have regarding the fishing industry, how to become an inshore guide, what camera equipment to use, it doesn't matter, just let me know. Um, guys, if you enjoyed the video, shoot me a thumbs up, let me know that you like it, I'll keep doing more. You guys have a great day.